uh, my relationship with the Gaza Strip over the last uh, 10 years uh, has been as a teacher, not through MSF. I go and I train with a group of uh, physicians and surgeons from Oxford University. I also do work for MSF and I speak on their behalf for the international community on this particular issue. Um, so what, what I will be referring to in the rest of this interview with you is my relationship with colleagues in Gaza who don't necessarily work for MSF. Okay. Uh, I have a long-standing relationship with, with the medical community in the Gaza Strip through my training trips uh, over the last decade. And are you in and contact with them? Are you in regular contact I am. And what are they yeah. telling you? So I just want to say it's a very hard act to follow after listening to Biden's speech because, um, you know, what I'm about to tell you just seems so uh, such a shock compared to the, the the rest of the narrative that I've been listening to, waiting for my my uh, my interview. Uh, this is an avalanche of human suffering that's a hundred percent man-made. It is the the worst humanitarian catastrophe I've experienced in my lifetime, and in my growingly long career in humanitarian medicine. And it's burning through the hearts of every single humanitarian that I know. You know, I'm going to paint a picture for you of the degree of suffering that we're seeing. People keep asking me about medical aid and hospitals and the situation of the hospitals. The entire hospital health care system collapsed almost a week ago. It was announced on TV for the whole world to see. And in that week, there has been indiscriminate bombardment. And I, I don't even know if indiscriminate is the right term because it's targeting health care facilities, ambulances, churches, mosques. Schools, refugee camps, densely populated refugee camps, wiping out entire families in a second, entire multi-generational extended families in a second. There are almost 1,000 families in the Gaza Strip who have had at least two members of their family, at least two members killed in the last three weeks. There are almost 4,000 children who have been killed and identified, excluding almost a thousand children whose bodies are still trapped under the rubble. Some of them may be alive for a long period before they ultimately die under the rubble. And I'm sorry if there are any young you know, children watching this, perhaps this is a, a good time to ask them to leave the room, but I think it's important that I paint a picture, particularly when I'm following a news narrative that almost dismisses this avalanche of, of suffering that, that is unprecedented in modern times. You know, there's an acronym in the, in the Gaza Strip right now. You know, I, I'm a pediatric intensive care doctor. I see a lot of suffering in my career. There's an acronym that is unique to the Gaza Strip and it's called, it's WCNSF. Wounded child, no surviving family. Children, and it is used not infrequently in the last three weeks. It was coined in the last three, three weeks. One physician told me two days ago that, or a few days ago, that a little uh, girl came in wounded and she had a piece of paper in her pocket that she handed to him. He sent me a picture of the piece of paper. It had 27 names on it. And she said, these are the members of my family that were with me in my home. Please look for them. Please look for them under the rubble. Don't look for this one. And she points to the name of her sister. I know she's already dead. This is a 10 year old little girl. Wounded child, no surviving family should not exist as an acronym. And to, to follow President Biden as he continues to justify and to warmonger, all I can say is this has to stop. It's a collective stain on our humanity. It's a, a, a stain on our collective humanity.